pretty big bet. Um, pretty big bet. I wonder if he ever floats. It's a pretty good floating board. Against our range from stealing, that's especially good. I think I have 56, 63, 99. I think I'll go for a sort of a thin 3 bet here uh, because he's kind of early, this guy, but he's shown that he does have a bit of a range, and I think we look very strong. And we've got a you know semi playable and the ace blocker as well, so pretty good leverage with the C bet. Uh, it's a little bit worrying that he's called. He can have I think ace queen king queen. Um, if he's got a hand like uh, tens or uh, let's say he's got eights and he wasn't quite ready to fold it. Um, Then uh, he's probably got king queen, which is annoying a lot. But I think we can fold out anything under the queen. I hope. I mean, we look so strong. I think in this situation that he should probably fold tens, tens down. Um, and he looks committed at this point. You know, he has folded. So it looks like he has that sort of hand. Uh, if he's, we do have the ace blocker against the ace queen. Obviously, uh, if he's got king queen. You know, that's like uh, 12 combos once the queen's out. Ace-queen probably plays it like that as well is another... Um, uh, sorry, I got distracted here by the king-queen guys. Uh, ace, what was I saying? Ace-queen. What's that? Nine combos? Yeah, nine combos. We have an ace blocker and there's a queen there. So ace queen is like nine, and we said twelve is twenty-one combos of queens, and probably plays that way with sevens, eights, nines, tens. That's like six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four plus the nines is like three, right? It's like twenty-seven combos. Uh, so he's probably got a few more combos he's probably got a few more combos of uh wow that's ugly he's probably got a few more combos of uh like pairs and stuff that we can fold out and you know the bet on the turn if we think he's folding anywhere near half the time obviously it's very profitable because it's only uh, what do we make it like just one third pot or just over um, and so I think the barrel there is okay I mean just because we did 3-bet from small blind and we're trying to sell the story that we have aces, kings uh, ace, queen or you know some sort of queens some sort of monster because that's what we should have really from that spot right uh, Wow, this is really kind of. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm gonna just uh, check back here and take the free one. But we could probably fold out a queen if we bet. But if he jams on us, just decides he's got an ace and he's going with it. You know, I hate not getting the free card because we have eight outs. Probably stack him. You know, if we hit, we're probably gonna stack him. Uh, he could have hearts some of the time, which, you know, probably also calls turn, but we could barrel off. Uh, well, not now because he, he would have hit it, but um, I just think there's not probably quite enough hands in his range that we can fold out on the turn when you consider that he's probably calling with any heart. He's probably calling with any ace. He may sometimes call with a queen, and uh, he may... Uh, you know, if he does check jam us, it's pretty ugly because we would have had good clean outs where if he has an ace, we'd probably get his stack. Uh, if that six had have been a uh, three, for example.
Um, he is the big blind, obviously, so... Uh, you know, he can have some hands that are a medium strength, but... Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if he's folding like a 9 you know. I don't think he's ready to fold it. Um, and the stack size is kind of awkward too, where if we bet turn, you know, the, the SPR on the river is a bit hard to work with. Got a bit of a coffee on the go now that it's 5.30 a.m. Three of 13. I must say, uh, for a $5 dollar um, these guys are playing okay. I haven't seen that much donking around. Usually see a lot more donking around, but you know it is a it's Wednesday morning now, but Tuesday in most places. So I think Tuesday is actually probably the worst day to play because the Super Tuesday's on and it's just a working day and it's just like early in the week. And I always feel like, obviously, of course, the weekends are great, uh, and I always feel like Monday's pretty good because I don't know if players just. Maybe they lose sometimes on the weekend and they're like, hey, I'll try and recoup my losses. I want to play again tomorrow night. And they play, or maybe they sometimes they take a day off, have a long weekend, take a day off from work, or maybe they just, or uni or whatever, or just get home from work and want to play again after the weekend. They want to get revenge, or maybe they won and they want to ride the rush. I always feel like Monday's really soft as well. And yeah, Friday later in the week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then sort of Tuesday, Wednesday are kind of when there's just less less fish around. I think I will check here. We have the uh, the blockers to the straight if it comes like a queen or a 10. We have backdoor clubs. Um, and this player is kind of, uh, I think... This sort of guy that uh, could always stab if we look weak. Uh, although, you know, his post-flop aggression doesn't seem to be that high. Um, I think now we've taken this line, we can't actually fold. Uh, and uh, I don't think we can fail you, but either we're just sort of caught in limbo. He had the old 6-3 off, uh, so he's defending pretty, pretty wide, I would say. <laughs> he probably wants to just have a battle with us because uh, had some kind of good battles yeah I'm gonna roll here um, it's kind of uh, slightly ever so slightly profitable I think but uh, I think the big blinds probably over folding which makes it reasonably profitable to jam there 31, uh, 3, 6, 9, M4 if the big blind jams. Yeah. What's this? 3, 8. Hmm. Not a very big raise. Big blind shortish again. Uh, wow, the guy hasn't been that loose, but our hand is pretty strong. Hmm, can't really call, can we? Slightly too much. Yeah, I think we're going to fold that one. He's very active, that guy with pre-flop CB. Um, Post-flop, the stats kind of say he hasn't been that aggressive so far. <clears throat> and he didn't stab with a 3-6. Uh, you know, not that he really should be. Uh, but just that some players would. I thought he might be the sort of player that might. Just like, hey, I have to bet to win. I'm stabbing with everything. One of those unbalanced types. Uh, uh, you know, which is fine. 
in a lot of instances, but I don't think we're going to give up. Well, I mean, I guess we are sometimes. I don't know how often we're giving up on the King-9, just checking giving up against a big blind, um, which is, you know, I mean, it looks like we have showdown is what I'm trying to say. And if we have showdown, um, so just doing a few exercises here, guys. Yeah, if we have showdown, it obviously makes no sense to, to bluff since we have a folding, but um, a lot of players don't think like that. They just see checks and think they have to bet to win. It's that kind of that first level thinking. Oh. <coughs> a bit hungry too. King five off. It's close. These these two behind haven't been very active. So excuse me. So it's really just a big blind. Uh, but he is defending with a pretty high frequency now. So uh, king, you know, which is okay for us since we have a semi playable hand, I guess, against his range. But um, these three bets a bit as well, and it's not a great hand. It's kind of close. I guess. Definitely want to go ahead and bet this. It's probably the worst card that could have come out uh, because he can have... Well, he has bet it though, which is kind of surprising. But I think he calls a flop definitely with 10 jack, and he can have spades as well. I guess he can have king queen, king eight, eight nine. Can't really have that many bluffs. He can have pocket twos and stuff as well. Uh, I mean, I don't think he can have that many bluffs unless he's got like ace two or just made some crazy hero flop call with ace high, but. Um. Yeah, I mean, you you do see it, but it's just pretty unlikely. So I think if it had been a brick and he bet small, we would have had a tough decision. Because he could have missed a flush draw and just a bet to win, but... Um, M7 on the top right. Probably going to be pretty hard to fold here. This queen. Uh, of course, we are in early. Wow, and that does look strong. Seven. I think we can probably fold now. These guys have been kind of tight. Point six is uh, what's that? Three and a half. This guy's been really tight. I'm gonna make a pretty nitty fold here. Wow, the Ace Ten. Ace Ten was a three bet. It's crazy, crazy stuff. He has the nuts. Uh, wow, that's interesting. That he three bet M Seven early position open with Ace Ten. Um. Wow, this is kind of nitty, but this guy's been so tight. He's only M4. It's pretty nitty. We can flat there. Uh, yeah, we can flat there uh, if we think he's a bit looser. Or if our hand is a bit better, of course. It's not quite good enough.
See if we can get some action this time. These small and big are both uh, three bending at high frequencies, and both have pretty good stack sizes to do it. Um, get the action that we wanted. Uh, definitely want a four bit here. I think this guy's capable of um, five bidding with some hands that we beat here. Given the history, you know, we've we've had a few significant uh, clashes. So yeah, I think you can have ace queen uh, some of the time. Yeah. That was the big one for the chip lead, 130,000 we would have had. Hmm, sigh, sigh. We would have been a uh, significant chip leader. Um, 36. 36, do we want to take 5-8? Uh, no, do we want to take 5-8? I think we don't. Not looking good. It is not looking good, peeps. M2. Average stack 52. What do we need? Like four double ups. Oh, well, this guy's limped. It's, that's kind of a good start. Get to see a free flop, and we can't connect. Wow, we have a flush draw. Damn. What if he has king queen or something? I can fold out with a bet. Yeah, he's calling. So he limped with the old ace queen there. And this is good. This could be the first double up. Can we dodge the bullets? No, we can't. <laughs> Limp base queen. I just want to get a note on this guy before I Limp base queen. On a couple of these guys, actually, before we leave this table. What do we get for 12th? A whopping $13.71. Uh, um, we can fold. End of five dollar. Get a note on this guy, been pat being pretty active. There is the final table, just to rub it in a bit. <laughs> um, seemed kind of splashy. I had a few battles with that guy earlier, actually. This Jaguar 888. And then there was one. Not a bad one, though. 1500 up top, actually. But we have got our work cut out for us. Top 30 get paid. And we have an M here of uh, probably actually call this UTG jam here. Probably re isolate here. Um, I think that it probably. 
Wow, it's kind of really close. I think because he's only M3 ish and he's. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I just think he's jamming hands like uh, King 10s and small pairs and smaller suited aces. Just because he's so short, he knows the big blind, the blinds are coming around, so he'll go down to M2. Uh, I just think, even if he's not that good with short stack play, I still think he's probably like. Um, at least aware of the fact that, I mean, he's going to be tiny after the blinds pass, so not surprisingly, you know, he had queen 10. And, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, we're only M4, so we need to find some sort of opportunity to get some chips. And now we have M10, so yeah, almost, so um, it just popped us up nicely. Gave us a little bit more playability. How do you guys play this hand? Pocket Kings, UTG open, second position, flats. Big blind shoves, M10, UTG folds. Second position now shoves in M, actually, yeah, just under M10, M8. And you have the Pocket Kings. Fold. And what a fold with 50-odd players left in the Sunday Millions. That is a nice fold by PokerStars Pro Shinbunchi. I like it. I do like that fold. Probably should be studying Japanese at this point. The hangover. This is a very relative lesson I'm studying called hangover. <laughs> Nomisugi. It's over drinking. Uh, but no, I should say that's been a little bit mezurashi lately. A bit rare. Um, but hara ga hiru. I am hungry right now. And it is time for Asagohan breakfast. Just gotta use these words so you can remember them, but, uh, yeah, I was studying early while I was playing. <clears throat> I had it running in the background. Um, I don't think it cuts out much EV. It's not like I'm really... Well, I was kind of focusing but on the Japanese, but... Uh, hmm. I don't know why. I think uh, this guy's kind of opening pretty wide from everywhere and we look crazy strong here. Uh, I think that he's folding a, a very... When you consider the range that he's opening with compared to what he's folding, I think that uh, he's probably a pretty good raise to be making. Uh, yeah. I... You gotta be a little bit careful overusing it, I think, against regs. Uh, cause they kinda catch on. And, you know, they might take some of those hands that they should be folding there, like Ace Jack. I mean, we look like we have, if we're gonna three bet against their early position open with them sort of nine, you don't expect us to have that many bluffs in our range, right? And if we're value raising, we should have sort of ace queen up, pocket tens up. Uh, and so with that range in mind, hands like ace jack and you know, eights and king queen and stuff is just all stuff that he's definitely opening and folding. And of course, he's opening much wider than that. Um, well, I mean, 21% of hands at the moment. 
And so if we look in Equilab, let's just have a peekaboo at 21%. And this from early position. So if it's happening like this, uh, 21%, but only calling with Mm, well, no. Ace Queen up nines. Let's just say nines up. He he calls or, or jams. Uh, probably something like that. And that's only five percent of hands, right? And so that's where the profit comes from. Is that we rep so big that. He's actually folding, well, I mean, if that's correct, 75% of the time, uh, which makes it obviously, well, you know, hugely profitable. Um, since we were risking, I mean, we don't have, the other beautiful thing about, of course, three bet, big blind three bets is you don't actually have to, you don't have to risk that much extra. Let's come back to that one and just think about what we want to do against the min raise here. Well, that makes it easier. Uh, what was I going to do here? Min raise, betting. Uh, I think I would have just shoved there, actually. Honestly, I just think he can have a pretty wide range that he's just trying to ISO with, with like ace nine and king tens and stuff. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so just coming back to this hand. So there's 1720 in there. And we raised from 400 to 2000. So 1720 in there, we raised 1600. So it doesn't even have to work, you know, half the time, like 48% or whatever. Uh, and we just said it would work 75%. So this guy did have ace jack, which is interesting. So my jam would have been called, and I would have looked like a fish. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm surprised he made them. It's interesting that he made that very small three bet. Uh, and not like a proper size. Um, I mean, I guess it's not bad, because he can keep in some hands he dominates. You know, like the smaller races. Because I probably wouldn't be folding there, but I'm. Oh, it's kind of close. We could be dominated, but I mean, I don't really think I fold there much with any sort of hand. Well, I mean, with anything, yeah. To the min raise. Well, I mean, two seven off and stuff, crappy stuff. I might. Um, but yeah, I mean, some players will do it with the nuts, of course, nutty hands. But it didn't feel like he had a nutty hand. Felt like he had a wider hand. Um, but it's just interesting that he chose that sizing. I don't necessarily hate it. I mean, some good things can come of it, especially if you get players then to, to you know, kind of bug out like I was going to bug out and just probably jam. His call, I guess, was on the loose side, I mean, but not that bad against the big blind. Uh, I mean, he's kind of deep, though. I, I think he can probably fold, but without some sort of specific history telling him otherwise. Sorry, guys, getting quite tired here. It's 6 a.m. now. This is... Uh, uh, yeah. What are we here? Still a fair way to go here too. It's a little bit painful, one tabling this time in the morning. Need one of you guys to take over for me. Especially since I've got to be up in like 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 5 hours I guess. Might fall asleep guys. 
Just wake me up if I start sleeping here. It's hard to get in a good schedule when it's this sort of timing. I, if I was in Canada or somewhere, it'd be perfect. But uh, in Japan, it's hard to get the schedule, you know, just coming on to night shift. And then I've got to get up kind of early tomorrow, so that's going to kind of set me back again. So, I mean, this session has not been great. Um... We're down to 1,100 in the 888 account now. We've got the money we, we won from the uh, 5 rebuy on Skrill, which is taking forever to process. Skrill's very slow. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. 888 Poker is very slow. And PokerStars withdraws uh, to NetTeller take about 30 seconds, and to Skrill, normally the same. That is to say they are virtually instant. These guys actually been three betting a bit, so I might actually just fold here. Uh, but you know, with a couple of tight blinds, well, tight big blind and the ace blocker at M ten ish, I don't mind opening from early so much, but I think here it's probably not not great. Break time coming up here, guys. I'm going to refresh a bit, grab a snack, and if I have the power, I will continue to record. Uh, this has been Aces Up for PokerNerve.com. Thanks for tuning in.